Any problem back here at the airport? No, no sir. sir. Remove the cough. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Come on, you guys can't leave me like this. What is going on? Can somebody tell me what is going on? Who are you? Welcome back home. Please enter the car, let me take you home. My boss is waiting for you. And who's your boss? Mr. Nelson, one. Yeah, hello. Yes, come on, right in. Come on, bring him in, bring him in. Oh, yeah. Ah, Nelson, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson, my boy. <laughs> oh, boss. What in the name of God is going on today? Oh, come on, boss. It's simple. Welcome back to the country, and you are in your boy's house. What? <laughs> you, you mean, you mean you, this, this whole place is truly yours? Every square inch of it, boss. Not as a tenant, but as a landlord. My God, Nelson, <laughs> how did you do it? <laughs> oh, please, why don't you have a seat first? <laughs> oh, David, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Brief me, Nelson. Oh, well, boss. Um, first things first. Your boy engineered your release and deportation from Austria and subsequent release here in Nigeria. Ah, oh, and how did you do it? Are you now a government official? Oh, far from it, boss. Far from it. You see, as a matter of fact, I am still the same person you taught me to be, boss. A guy on the first lane. Is it a Dutch lady you married in Europe is entitled to her whims? But that does not include, and will never include, colluding with our country's officials to destroy your drug cartel that took you so many years to build. And sending you to 12 long years in prison simply because you had some domestic issues with her. Most of your boys left in pursuit of their well being, but not me. I couldn't stomach it, boss. Come on, boss. I was just a bare street urchin in a jaguar when you me up and took me to Europe. Now how could I possibly forgive a lady who has destroyed everything for me? Everything for you and everything for our guys. And so boss, I have been planning my vengeance. And when I finally hit it big, 
I launched the operation. I saw you sitting right here beside me, a free man. <laughs> How did you do it, Nelson? Oh, boss. Her family members started disappearing one after the other, with a note left behind, saying that there will be no one left behind to answer the family name if you are not immediately released and deported down to Nigeria. She thought I was bluffing. When her husband and her two-year-old son disappeared last two weeks, oh dear. Then and then she knew exactly what she was up against and pressurized her country to do exactly, exactly as I wanted. Your release by the NDLEA officials was the simplest. It was kind of a Confucius relationship. Scratch my back, scratch yours. <laughs> Money exchanged hands. And here you are, a free man. Once again, boss, with all due respect, welcome back home. <laughs> Nelson, welcome here. Yeah. Nelson, how do I thank you enough, Nelson? Oh, for what, boss? Oh, come on, boss. I should be the one on the other side thanking you for everything. For without you, boss, there will be no Nelson. <laughs> Just like in the biblical tent, many were healed. But only one remembered to show gratitude. Uh -huh. Just one. You know, Nelson, gratitude is such a rare virtue in men that wherever it is seen and found, it must be appreciated. Thank you, my Thank you. Thank you, boss. <laughs> ah, feels good to be back home, Nelson. Welcome back home. I miss my country. <laughs> I miss my country. Um, uh -huh. mm. Tell me now, how is my father? Well, boss, the old man is doing fine and is kicking. Well, you see, boss, your boy covered your ass real tight. As a matter of fact, no one in your village knows that you were in prison. Nobody? Nobody. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you. Welcome, boss. Now to my next question, Nelson. The house, the cars, your new status. Mm. How come? Are you, are you back in the drug business? Kidnapping. Kidnapping.
I got to discharge them on time. <laughs> so, what's up? What are we doing like? Two some, three some? Well, for them, yes. But for you, I got you a fine gentleman upstairs. <laughs> I'll be shocked. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. No, I have to give you this number. I swear. And I like this here touching body. Oh, Lord of mercy. Oh, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. What can baby? What can baby? What that ass, baby? What can? Oh, oh. The heavens will bless you, Nelson. The heavens will bless you, now. Oh, oh. Ah. What is it, boss? Nelson, I buy some fire. Hey, my kingdom is on fire, Nelson. Nell, Nell, for me to sleep with a madman, that's extra charges. Me. And I tell you, man, I still want to be that. Oh, you watch your tongue, woman. That's my boss, you do. Fire that thing! Screw your boss, man. See you. Fire that English. Fire that thing! Listen and listen, dude. You talk to me one more time in that manner. I swear you're dead. Not on your life, Nelson. Which I just know English. Forget this English show. Fire that thing! Kiss my name. I said, take a I don't want to kiss my name. Nelson, is she gone? She's gone. I'll tell you what is going on. Here. How, to Baba. How evil can you be, Nelson? Excuse me? Excuse you? So this is why you were doing everything possible to get me drunk back at the bar. You thought I was so drunk that I would, I would not be able to recognize her. Now what in the name of God are you talking about, boss? But Nelson, the lady you kidnapped and brought right here for me to screw is the princess of my kingdom, Abba. <laughs> oh, come on, boss. For crying out loud, Lillian is a prostitute. Oh, oh. Then, is happening. A princess of Abba is right here living a disgraceful double life. Their majesties must hear this. This is Delta State and Lillian lives in Enugu State. Admitted the striking resemblance between the two of them shocked me too bad but, but this... Wait, can you for one stop talking Nelson? A princess of my kingdom is here desecrating our, our, our culture and you're sitting out here talking. Take me to her at once. She must be stopped before she destroys my people. Boss, do you still believe they are 
same person. Isn't it obvious, Nelson? Take me to Abba at once! Yes, boss. Why are you stopping here? Come on, boss. I did not come all the way from Enugu to Ekmoma just to see your princess with you. I came to prove something to you so that you can concentrate and organize your chartered life. You still don't appreciate the dangers of what is going on for my people, Nelson? Of course I do. And that is why I brought you here. But right here is your princess's lodge off campus. How do you know that? <laughs> Come on, boss. In my line of business, human networking is key. here. Yeah. How are you? I'm great. What's the biggie? You asked him to bring me your ASAP. Yeah, did he not give you the 100,000 that I gave for you? He gave it to me now. Uh, but that doesn't answer my question. Don't worry, baby. You're safe. I'll explain everything to you much later. Uh, the person we're waiting for is here. David will take you back to Enugu. Cool deal. And you? Hey, what are you doing here? Uh, I was just around the neighborhood. Oh, you said to check oh, of course. You know how you're doing. Take it inside. This is not what brought me to this place. Please. Fatty, if, if, if you know what this drink did to me, you won't even present it to me. I mean, you don't know what it has done to me. Just, just, this is a very, is a very... There it is. Take the drink inside. <clears throat> okay, why no. not? I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. You! 
Good to see you. Hey, my son, you're welcome. Good to see you. You will have happy to see you. You well. I'm okay. Hey, listen. God, I thank you. I thank you. I'm in front of your house. Hi. Sorry for the other day. I mistook you for someone else. And I, uh... My fee is 30k for daybreak movements. Alright. I really don't have a problem with that. Uh, I still feel weird. Yes. Forget the English. I speak it impeccably too. 30k for service rendered. Any position, 30k. That's the flat rate. So just move your car and get your service. what the deal was before you brought me here. Why is he closing his eyes? Actually, it's a taboo in my place for any other man except her husband or members of her immediate family to see the upper legs of the princess. I'm not your princess. I told you before and I'm telling you again. I am not born into a royal family. I am not from a royal lineage. Are you deaf? What is wrong with you people? Of course I'm not. Sorry for the embarrassment. I brought you here so my father can see you. And to ask you a few don't questions. You, don't you ask me any stupid question, mister. Now I know that I'm going to be losing 30k by doing this. Hey, go to hell. And guess what? Kiss my black spotted Nash. Bros, forget the English, man. Not much. Hey. Arrow. 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 Hey. This is an abomination. Princess Olama of Abba Kingdom. Hey! Abomination! No. Where did you find her? Father. Is Olama a twin? Not at all. No! Are you sure? Absolutely. Hey! Igwe must hear this. Igwe must hear this. Oh, I'm cool. I can watch a girl and a man in Obuja. Hey, hey. You don't have to keep doubting me, Papa. With these very eyes, I saw Princess Olama, while the lady that just left here was a few meters away. Girls of Abba. No, I can't believe it. I cannot believe this. I mean, there must be an explanation to it. Exactly my point, Father. 
there must be an explanation. And I have vowed to discover it. And until I do, I will not be going to Abba with you, Father. You must be joking, Ibogwe. You must be joking. We have only two days to the expiration of Igwe's deadline. How can you allow our family to suffer such disgrace while you are here searching for whatever you want to search for? Ah. Father, is it not true that anyone who produces twins cannot sit on the ancient throne of Abba? Are you trying to say that our king had twins and secretly sent one away in order to return the throne? Father, with what you just saw today, isn't it possible? Happy for more serious. No, no, not yet. Relax, Papa. Not yet. We just discovered this. We need to investigate and be sure of our facts. Remember, if this turns out to be true, as the issue, Gide, you will become the Iwe of Abba immediately. <laughs> My son. I'm already disqualified as Isiogi the Ofaba. Yes. The council gathered together and removed me as Isiogi. I'm no more the Isiogi of Ofaba. All right. Well, you, you still have two days. Yes, you still have two days in that position. Who knows? We may be able to discover this before that time. But if in the end we're not able to do that, fine. I will return to Abba and be installed the issue Gide. Uh, at least that will buy us enough time. Because Father, this, this is crucial. If this whole thing turns out to be true, the throne of Abba will come to our family immediately. And that Papa is more important to me than going to Abba right now. And again, Father, the princess has already seen me. She must have told her parents. All right. Um, how do you intend going for the search of this whole thing? How? how? Father. Nelson has developed a plan already and I need you to be part of it. Me? Yes, you. Father, the implications are so huge that all hands must be on deck. Remember, if this turns out to be true and nobody does anything about it, people will start dying indiscriminately in Abba once the twins clock 30. The deaths could even start with you and I, Papa. Is that what you want? stroke this morning. Please, who are you? Why are you the one calling me? What about my father? Oh, armed robbers invaded our house and took their phones too. Hey, oh, I'm good. thank you very much for calling me up. I'm, 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 Thank you very much. 
Sorry, please. I'm so sorry, please. Can you just drop me at any junction? Just anywhere. Anywhere at all is fine. No problem, no problem. Just come here. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are you sure of what you have just told me, Alamo? Yes, Dad. I won't lie about anything like that. I saw him. He said he was coming back from the airport with a friend who came to pick him up and then he saw me drive past. So he insisted on coming to say hello, I mean, to greet me properly. <laughs> this is stranger. Why? 24 hours to the expiration of the ultimatum I gave his father, Ibukwe suddenly appears in the country without deeming it proper to come to Abba. The next day, his father leaves Abba without telling anybody where he was going. My Lord, maybe he's aware of his return and has come to meet him. Without telling anybody in Abba. You know the Isiogidi of Abba is full of surprises. Could be he wants to surprise everybody again. Well, yeah, there's some sense in that. But he will find out that he's not going to surprise anybody. Alama, call me Kwere. Well, yes. I want to see and inform my elders immediately. Wait, Dad. You said you gave his father an ultimatum that ought to expire tomorrow. Yes. What ultimatum? The Royal Council met last week and voted to remove him as the issue Gidi of Abba. Your father issued a decree giving him eight days to produce a son Ibukwe to take over or lose out to a different family. Oh, he started drinking heavily again. Oh. He got so deep that uh, he became a disgrace to the exalted position that he holds. So, I said, we've had enough. Oh, fair enough. I mean, good for him. His son will certainly bring back the glamour and dignity associated with that, with that position once he's installed. I think so too. I beg to be excused, Dad. No, let me call it brief. Excuse me. as bad as the person told you. Hmm? Mama, hmm? it is not the fact that Amobas came here that scared me. Eh? What is Papa? Going? Ah, he went to the police station. They invited him to come and identify our phones. Someone said he picked them by the roadside. So he has gone to bring them back. attack and stroke this morning. Fiawa, it is not my portion. Hey. Who must have made that kind of call? Amonyo, I have not been this scared all my life. Hey, it's okay, it's okay. Let me get you something to eat. Only, hey. no. Welcome, only. Hey.
mistakes will not be tolerated. If any of you is in doubt about what I can do to anyone who screws up my job, ask your boss here, Nelson. A few years ago, he was my boy. Very clever, very obedient. And for that, I helped him shape his destiny. Today, the table has turned. I need his help to shape my own destiny, and that is why he assembled every one of you here. Nelson. He made me whatever I am today, as I made each and every one of you. I see this operation as payback to him, and I expect you, you, and you to see it as payback to me. Are you in? Yes, boss. Yes, boss. The operation starts today. Yes, we're still having fun. Uh -huh. Just that this is going to be the most expensive fun of your life, and I bet you you enjoy every bit of it. Ross, please, if I can see the fun, I'll still enjoy it. Let me see it, please. Part of it. Now, no more argument, or I'll shoot it in the back. Sorry. Now move it. Okay, sir. Is the money I charge you too much? Come on. It's it's not too much, bros. Cut it. Let me reduce it. Okay, don't give me any money. Business. 
fire business. You? Yes, me. Please, ladies and gentlemen, sit down. I need to make an introductory speech. How dare you bring my back? attention. This is just a lesson. You will cooperate with me and that's an order. As I speak to you, your two sons, Tony and Peter, in the University of Joss are being shadowed by two sharpshooters. Shut up, I'm still talking. So just in case you think of disobeying me at any point in time, they die. And then you die. And then your entire family Don't ever think of playing with me, I'm a ruthless motherfucker. I don't play. I don't bluff. My God. So you have my sons too? What manner of business are you talking about that justifies you? Take them to their room. If any of them tries to play smart at any point, please. Cut off the person's ten fingers. Make sure they are and bring them to me. Yes. Can't you at least tell us what this is about? Don't worry. Relax. Spend time with me. In due time, you will know. You are a human being like me, so you are my brother. <laughs> and uh, advance in age, too. Um, please, I beg you, ask them to stop what they are doing. I'm free, I am members of my family. My wife here is past menopause. Look at us. Can we possibly bear any children at this age? Please, have mercy on us. Whatever is our sin, forgive us and let do not hurt us. Don't abandon God. told you over and over that no one is going to hurt any of you here. They've assured me even before bringing you here that they will not do anything and I believe them. All we need from you is answers. Just answers to few questions and you return home safely. First, we learned that you are not the indigent of the village where we found you. I mean, where are you from and why are you living there? Before now, I was living in Medugu with my family. My wife and I were traders, doing fairly well. Lilia and our brothers were in the university. Everything changed after the 2011 election violence in the northern part of the country. As if that was not enough, a terrorist group invaded our neighborhood and destroyed everything. In fact, we lost everything. We narrowly escaped death by the whiskers. It was then that uh, my wife and children Pressurized me to relocate to the south. Lilian, who was in the university, chose to drop out of school 
and became a hustler, Papa. Yes, a hustler. Just to sustain her brothers in school and uh, we her parents. Prefer the word prostitute. So you are aware that your daughter here sells her body for 40k, as she put it. And you endorsed it, huh? Uh, my brother, we had to survive. We had no other choice. Of course you have a choice. You could send your family members to the village and possibly solicit for help from people, from your family members. Other people who were faced with such a situation did the same thing. Our culture provides such and makes it possible for us to get help from family members. But you refuse to do that. And that brings me to my next question. If where you're staying is not your village, then where? Away. I'm sorry. I cannot give you any answer. Papa. Papa. What? Even when our lives are in danger, yeah? Ibe, what is it about where you were born that you do not want to tell me? Chica. You will not understand. Oh, don't dare talk to me like that. I have accepted that answer from you since I was a child. And so do your children. Maybe we have suffered untold hardships on the account of that. Look at our daughter. Selling her honor as a woman just to get her for us. Because you have refused to answer this question. Under such a situation, you're telling me I will not understand. Understand what? Yes. Understand what? Talk to me. Tell them. Just begin to talk down. I am protecting all of you, Chica. Protector. Protector. We are hostages here, even. A god is being pointed at us. Are you telling me you are protecting us? How? You are from Abakanda. Aren't you Ibe? <laughs> Your expression has answered my question, Mr. Ibe. We are also from Abba. Now, tell me. Why did you, why did you leave Abba? And why are you hiding it from your family? Ibe, is it true? Where is Abba? Chica, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't even know them. I would rather die than answer that question. I am even at Gompon. Do you want to die? Yes. You'd rather die? Yes. Alright. How about watching your family members die right in front of you? Lillian dies first. Nelson should have died. No, 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 Oh God, please, 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 All right. Please. Silence. 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 God. Nelson, put the gun down. Talk. Yeah. I'll talk. Oh. No, I will talk. Um, um, please. Don't take me back to... Don't harm any of my children. Um, <clears throat> on my honor as Isio Gideofaba, I give you that promise. 
Thank you. And God will disgrace and utterly destroy any person that will break it. After you have us everything. But why is he really? Comport, Nelson. Comport. Let me talk. Um, thank you. Thank you. First, my full name is uh, uh, Ibezi. I am the son of uh, Mazi Ibezi of Akaupu village in Aba. What? Yes. Ibezi Mudeze. The one that disappeared while hunting in the forest. The same day Atani family lost the royal throne of Abba. I mean, 41 years ago. No, I did not disappear. Only left Abba to save my life and that of Chika here. Yes. When I was 16 years old, He came back one day, drunk, and raped me. When he realized what he did the next day, he ran away. Said he could not imagine himself living in the same down with me after what happened. Neither could I. I was confused. I was devastated. This is a man I grew up knowing as my father. I had to run away too. I ran to a neighboring rural area where months later I discovered I was pregnant. For reasons I, I could not explain even now, I kept the pregnancy. survived of begging and walking on people's farms until I was due for delivery. When labor started, I had nobody to run to. So, I went to the house of a young doctor who was doing his national youth service. Your Highness, he is neutralized. Ah, Your Highness. Ibezi Mudeze, you were one of the young men sent to the jungle of the spirits to dispose the effigy of the malevolent god Okanga when our people rejected it for its wickedness seven months ago. Ain't you? I, I am, Your Highness. Good. I have business to do with Okanga right now. And the native doctor told me that Okanga can only help me if I can find out where it was disposed and meet with him there. You will take me there now. How, Your Highness? Nobody goes into the jungle of the spirits and come out alive without the gods permitting him. I have their permission for the three of us, Ibezim. The most powerful native doctor in our clan just gave it to me.
take this. Even with this, Your Highness, I'm sorry I cannot do as you want. Before going into the jungle of the spirits seven months ago, we swore before the gods of Abba never to show anybody where we disposed of our candle. Failure which the punishment will be instant execution by the gods. Should the person that did this step his feet on Abba's soil after that? Just before my father died last month, Ibezin, a case was pending before him involving you and your father. It was said that you and your father found the sacred green snake dead in your house and secretly buried it to avoid the expensive burial rites. You would have been made to carry out for it. If you had made it public, both of you had already admitted guilt, haven't you? We were already preparing to bury the sacred snake as a custom stipulates, Your Highness. There are two types of punishments for people who committed such offense in Abba Ibezim. And the Igwe has the exclusive rights to determine which should be meted out to them. One is being forced to properly bury the snake, as we're getting ready to do. And the other is banishing of the culprits and his entire family from Abba forever. In two weeks' time, I will be crowned the Igwe of Abba Ibezim. Now, are you taking me to Okanga? Or are you risking family banishment once I become the Igwe? Think about your mother, your brothers, your sisters, the disgrace. What will life lay in store for all of you in a foreign land? Better only you than all of you, if you ask me, Ibezim. Now, are you taking me there or not? This is the place, Your Highness. Where? I can't see any effigy there. We we buried it in the ant hill, as the chief priest instructed. You can now. Yeah, my prince. Take him a little distance from here. The both of you wait till I come. Okay, my prince. Move fast. Okanga! 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 Prince Eagle of Abba Kingdom, why are you here disturbing the rest of a gold rejected by your people? I am sorry for what my people did to you, Great Okanga. If I become the Igwe, I will immediately return you to Abba and force my people to keep sacrificing to you with a royal decree. But first, I need your help to mount the throne. The throne of Abba has been taken away from you and your family. The native doctor has told me as much. 
But he didn't tell me why. Why should the gods pass such a wicked judgment on me? Obioku, the true husband of the woman you forced to marry you committed suicide at the shrine of the gods of Abba after you forcefully took his bride away from him on their wedding day despite everybody's objection, including that of your late father. How is that possible? My father and I have offered all the sacrifices we were told to offer to the gods after the incident. He only appeased them to spare your life and let you keep Ijama, Obiuko's wife. The cause he blessed on you before killing himself is still in place. He asked the gods to deny you happiness all your life. And also the very thing that gave you the power you used to take his bride from him. Royalty. Since that day, his blood has been constantly before the gods, crying and urging them to rise up against you. Now, they have. You will never be the Igwe of Abba. I made you a proposal to help me to the throne just now. Are you rejecting it, Okonga? This is my wife. What is happening to my wife, Okonga? Nothing. Nothing? Ah, she's in such pain as I'm seeing here. The wife is in labor. She is about to deliver a set of twins. No, Okonga. No, Okanga. In Abba culture, even though twins are considered sacred, and so never to be harmed. That same culture forbids anyone that produces them from occupying any public office. Being the Igwe of Abba inclusive, please, Okanga, kill the babies for me. In fact, let their mother die with them before delivery. Secure the throne for me, please. Oh, the gods of Abba have codes of conduct. Even as I'm here in the jungle, I am still bound by the gods. One of them is never to harm twins or their mothers. They are the property of the gods. If you want to be the way of Abba, return home and take care of that problem first. If you are able to handle it without the people getting to know, come back here. And I will give you the power to become the aware. You made what he said. Cause of Abba, Your Highness. Your Highness, you're crying. What's happened? My wife. I came back a while ago and I found my wife unconscious in the bathroom. And she has delivered herself a baby girl. What? Without sending for me? 
Madam, this is not time for question and answer section. Go in there and help her. I have already cut off the umbilical cord and the baby is safe. But for my wife, I don't know what to do. Please go in there. My God. How is she? We've lost her. Oh. Her highness is dead. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh. End of this forest. There's a river there. Kill that baby and throw her into that river. God forbid. No. Kill a twin baby. Your Highness, we had a deal. You promised to give me money that will enable me to survive in exile if I take you to Akanga. I've done my part and. This is my part. The money I promised you. Kill the baby and proceed on exile. Kill a twin baby and proceed on exile? As a young man with future. Or as a man condemned to death by the gods. You and I know that whoever that harms a twin in Abba will be executed by the gods within seven days, your highness. If I wanted you dead, Ibezim, I would have forced you to return to Abba with me. I brought you here in the forest of a neighboring kingdom because I wanted you to leave. The punishment for killing a twin can only take place if you ever return to Abba after killing the baby. The native doctor assured me of that a while ago. You're lying to me, ain't you? Ibezim. I don't have time for long talk. I can now follow you to make sure that I do as I want. Kill me if I don't, right? Good luck in your exile. How did it go, Ikena? As planned, my prince. I watched him kill the baby and threw her into the river. He's on his way to exile. Did he tell you where he's heading to? No, he didn't tell me, my prince. Whatever. If only he knew wherever he's going that the gods was to kill him for killing a twin born in Abba. Don't tell me you believe the lies I told him about the assurance from the native doctor. Ikena. Your Highness. I will do anything possible to become the Igwe. For the powers he promised me. I want you to stay back in the palace and take care of every other thing that happens. Keep the elders and the sympathizers busy with some kind of lies to cover the truth about my absence from the palace. By the way, he can now. I have taken care of everything, Okanga. You have taken care of nothing, Igolo. But babies are still alive. That's not possible. 
My guy Dikena told me that he watched Ibezim kill and dispose the second one. He cannot lie to you. He let Ibezim escape with the child around. He cannot lie to me? That son of a whore lied to me. God knows if I get him. By the way, I never told you that one of the twin girls will be the next queen of Abba. How? In Abba Kingdom, if the royal family loses the throne, the bearer of this yogi the title will become the Igwe. To do that, he must take for a wife the oldest unmarried lady in the royal family that just lost out. Due to the sudden death of the last Isyogidi, that position was passed on to his eight years old son. That boy is going to be the next Igwe of Abba Kingdom, and one of your twin girls will be his queen. The only way you can become the Igwe is if you kill the one that is to become queen before nightfall today. Please, tell me where Ibezin took her so I can track the bastard down and kill the both of them immediately. You will never be able to find them again. Only the destiny of the baby with him can. By the way, the queen to be is the one in your house. Then she must die today. She and the treacherous Ikena must die today. Be careful, Igodo. The spirit of your wife is very angry. She is watching over the child. Be very careful. Not even a thousand years spirit form can stop me, Ijoma. I will kill that animal you gave birth to. And I, Prince Eagle of Abba Kingdom, must become the Igwe. has left Abba. I wish I had seen him. I would have wrenched his heart out with my bare hands and fed it to him to eat before he dies. Well, that's good witness to bad rubbish. This idiot is now the only obstacle to the throne. Bitch, you should have chosen a better destiny. Die and get out of my way. Followed him to the jungle of the spirits, and I had everything he discussed with Okanga. Yes, that most wicked of gods I told him to kill the other baby to become the Igwe. I followed him to the palace, but I ran away when I when I heard people shouting that he has died. I, one of my colleagues told me that they heard him scream from his room. On, on rushing there, they found him dead, and his corpse was shattered. Like it was burnt. I think the, the gods must have roasted in my life. Thank you, the gods of Abba. Thank you, Ikenla, for listening to my pleas. Now allow me to save this baby. Thank you too for making me serious to do that. Now, now what next? Of course. I can't go back to the land of Abba. But you, you have to return to Abba. Tell our people the truth and help me. 
to console my family. I will tell you where you come for the baby later, so that she could be reunited with her people. I am sorry, Basim. I am sorry. I will never go back to Eba ever again. For the sake of this innocent baby, Ikenna, you have to. She deserves to live and grow up in Abba. Not with you in exile. She is innocent. And our people deserve to know the truth about what happened. What do you think the people will do to me if I tell them everything as it happened? They will kill me, Basim. They will kill me. I, I want to go on, on, on exile with you. I don't want to die. Okay. Lovely, healthy girls. You are lucky to have come when you did. I doubt if you would have survived giving birth to this set of twins alone. But if I may ask, where is your husband? I mean, your family. Oh, madam, you know, don't cry. Dry up your tears. We have to talk about this in the hospital, okay? Congratulations for self-delivery. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. Madam, let me go and clean up the room where you gave beds. Bury the after beds. Um, relax. Then, I will take you to the clinic where I work. Relax. Doctor. My God will bless you abundantly. Baby, I left with is Lillian here. Till death, I don't know what became of her twin sister. I left that village that same day. The next day, I took a cab to Makati, where I grew up. Hoping to meet a friend or a good neighbor who could help me. Coincidentally, I met Ibe there. He said he had been looking for me for two weeks. I 
his conscience wouldn't let him be. The next day he took me to Meduguri, where he had relocated to. to Abba now. I need to stay back and personally oversee the release of Ibe and his family. With what we know now, Father, I cannot leave him in the hands of just anybody. Oh no. Their safety to me is more important than anything else. Ibobwe, time is no more on our side. We have no time. Eh? Have you forgotten that Igwe's deadline is today? Eh? Father, you still maintain that there's no way we can buy more time. Why I'm asking this is because, come on, being deported from the prison yard in Europe means that I came back with nothing. Absolutely nothing. And if I have to go to the village to become the Isiogi, it means I need to relocate fully to the village, to Abba. Now, how do I do this and still restore the dignity of this family which is already in tatters with nothing in my pocket? How? Come on, Father. Look at me. I'm only surviving on the goodwill of my former boy, Nelson. Ashamed of myself. My son, if it is possible for me to buy more time under the circumstances, I would have told you. You know? Uh, there's nothing I can do. It's not possible. If I the only way you will have more 40 days is if I should drop dead before the expiration of today's deadline. But <laughs> I'm not dying. I'm not sick. I'm healthy. So it's not possible. You know? Oh, Father. Of course you will not drop. That you will not die. God forbid that I wish you death, not even for the presidential seat of this country. Never. Come on, Dad. You are the only family I have. It's all right. It's okay. I will do anything for you, Father. All right. Go back to the village. Tell His Majesty that I will be in Abba before 3 p.m. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, my son. Good. Okay, my son. <clears throat> my father. <clears throat> I love you, Father. Thank you. David, his boss. Take my father back to Abba. Uh, bring my back. You have to wait for me and take me to the palace because the royal council meeting will soon start. As a matter of fact, I need to inform them of Ibukwe's imminent return immediately. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, let me help you go.
Where are you taking me? Please, 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 please. Where are you taking me to? I'm sending you back to your house. So what you are telling us is that no one has spotted Isio Gudogunga and his son in Abba. How does one explain this? That in Isio Gide left Abba without informing me. A day after, we hear that his son is back home from abroad. Still, on the day that both of them were supposed to come and see me to avert family disgrace, neither of them is in Abba. Your Majesty, maybe he so get his back at his game again. We all know him as a master of the game of surprise. At this point, he is supposed to be wise enough to know that Abba is in a different mood today. Equity, Your Majesty, stretch out your hand. sword that symbolizes the authority of Isiogiri must lie in that house because it is a taboo for that sword to be removed out of Abba except in the time of war so Get one of your colleagues, go to his house, break down the door if you must, and bring me the sword immediately. It is quite obvious that Obuka and his son have no respect for the uh, exalted position in which their family is placed. Enough! Go. Igwe. Igwe. Are here. They're at the gate already. Go, Sir Fab. Ibokwe. Ibokwe. I heard this. Look at my father. See, my father, I've been begging him to get up. Okay, okay. I've been begging him to yeah, get up and talk be to me. It's okay, it's okay. okay. Be how a do man. you expect me to be a man? Look at my father, how do I take this? Hey, go to Papa! My son, 
you're welcome. And congratulations on your acceptance by the gods as the Iziogedi of Abba. With the warmth in our hearts. And on behalf of my sons in America, my Ugeze, my princess, and my chiefs, I accept you as one of us in this palace. One of our elders of our kingdom. To complete your installation, I hereby hand over the sacred sword to you. I promised you I was going to launch an extensive search for your twin sister, Lillian. Ah, I did that. And the search paid off handsomely yesterday. You found her alive? Bring them in. Like I told you, Dr. Osondo and Chison, no harm will come to you, okay? Just relax, enjoy my company, and tell these two ladies what you told me in Abba earlier today. Talk. When I came out from the bathroom, I found out that the girl had gone with one of the babies. I was perplexed. I was afraid to call in the police or even to make what happened public because I knew it would end me up in an unpleasant situation. I decided after searching for her in vain to take the baby to my fiance. She's also a medical doctor but serving them somewhere in the eastern part of the country. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. I couldn't just risk anything in such far away place by taking the baby to the police or making what happened public. Who will believe me? When the little inquiry I made about the lady showed that she has no relative in the village besides in their culture. According to the people I confided in, the lady is found. <laughs> I will be forced to marry her. Besides, in their culture, according to the people I confided in, for getting involved with her in the first place. Having a child out of wedlock is a taboo there. Any man that gets close to such a lady, forced to marry her and offer expensive sacrifices to their gods to cleanse the land. This is too much. And so... I, I... I don't get this. What solution do you have in mind? Both of us are getting married after our national service. I want us to adopt her as soon as... What? Are you not? Okay. Assuming I agree with you. Who is going to take care of the baby till then? I want us to take her to the orphanage and dance. Now what? We'll have to talk about this later. Eh? There is an emergency case in the hospital and that is what the bell is for. Emergency? Yes. Okay. If I have to go, that is what the bell is for. Okay. So, when I come back, we can talk about it. Take care of yourself. Doctor, yes, please. You have to take the baby to the wall. Yes, doctor. And inform the father about her successful birth. Let me return to the mall. As you saw yourself, she's not feeling strong yet. Yes, doctor. Hey, we are dead, Dr. Tsumi. Both of us will be killed if this thing gets out. We did not kill ordinary baby, but just a royal baby. 
It was just an accident, midwife. The people will not hear that, doctor. A royal has been killed violently in the hands of no royals. That's a sacrilege in Abba Kingdom. The penalty is even, for both of us, is just dead by hanging. No one will stop to ask how it happened. My position as a royal midwife cannot even save us. My God, what are we going to do? I don't know. I just don't know. Maybe it's our destiny to die like that. No. Let us go and report ourselves to His Royal Majesty. Wait, wait, wait. I have a baby. You have a baby? How does that change the situation here? She is just a day old. Yeah? Please substitute the dead baby with her. Yes, we can do this. Okay? The baby is in my room now. Listen to me. We can do this. I don't want to die with her. After much begging, she agreed with me. But, but co co convincing us on here to give up the baby was the most difficult part of it. But he agreed when he dawned on him that I could leave him forever. Uh, we, we had to secretly dispose the dead baby and handed over the abandoned child to their majesties. She is now the current princess of Abba Kingdom. Interesting. Yes. Thank you very much. You, you may leave now. Us. Now stand up. This way. Easy, easy. Wait. Mm. It seems the last part of this puzzle has just been solved. You and your twin sister, the Queen of Abba, you look so identical that you can hardly be told apart. Same with you, Lillian, you and the princess. And there lies the essence of what I've been doing with both of you for the past few days. I intend to return both of you to Abba as the Queen and Princess, respectively. You must be joking. I don't joke. Not when my future is involved. Someone will be coming here to coach you on the ways of the royals and I advise you cooperate with her. I will not. I will not cooperate with nobody while I'm under captivity. I will never. Same here. Alright. Fine. We'll find out when she comes. Nelson. Boss. I think we're done with the easy part of this plot. From this point on, I believe I'll be needing the spiritual backing you talked about. Well, thank God you're beginning to see reasons with me in that regard. Do you have any spiritualist in mind? Ah, uh, I've been away for too long. I don't know anybody. I say you take me to the one you talked about the other time. Called him a Pastor Leo or something. When? Now. So that's all about the plan, Pastor Leo. Nelson here told me that if I must succeed, 
but seek and have your spiritual backing from this point on. He says, you are the real power behind his tremendous success as a kidnapper. Yes. Not just him, you know. Countless others like him depend on me. You say, believe in me and my spiritual powers simply means success for whatsoever anyone sets out to achieve. I've heard you, and your ambition is absolutely achievable. But the question is, do you believe in me and the one I represent on earth? He believes, Pastor. Let him speak for himself, Nelson. For the spirits are here, and they are listening. I believe. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you will give me your blood to drink. Excuse me. Yes. And after that, you are as good as being on the throne of Abba Kingdom. You see, this is, this is where I come from, okay? Did you just hear this guy? You just have to do it. I did it. Take off your shirt. I turn your back to me. As you know, Nelson, you remain like this for seven days. Yes. During which I'll be sucking his blood twice daily. If he has enough blood to survive, he's got my backing. Nelson, my fee is two million naira. Who is going to pay me? I will take care of that. Uh, but as soon as you are able to get me the mask, come on. Consider the mask already in your hand. Take care of it.
This is your new room. Food will be ready shortly. Please, can you explain to me what's going on? What I'm doing here? You will soon find out. Calm down. I trust my boys. You trust your boys and it's been ours. Ah, they've not reached us on phone. Well, I gave them specific instructions and they will carry it out strictly. Calm down. Rodrigo. How far, David? Strictly as planned, sir. Oh. Where are the girls? We are professionals, sir. The princess is now cooling off in her room as we speak. While Betty is outside with Emilia. Ah. <laughs> Nelson. Ah. Uh -huh. Good job, good job. <laughs> Thank you, boss. <laughs> now I see why you say you trust your boys. Ah. <sighs> Gods of Abba. <laughs> Gods of Abba. <sighs> Get me in there. Right now. Only her. Bring her in. Yes, boss. Hmm, sweetheart. A million darling. How did it go? I'm still in shock at the way your colleagues were wasted, huh? Yes, that was not what we discussed. Relax for your own good and mind, nothing must be taken for granted. I know, but now the operation is so true that Princess Olama wouldn't have any idea than part of it. Why killing indigenous of Abba in the process? All right, fine, I give up. You win, no more bloodshed, okay? Hey, relax. Come on. It's still me. It's still me, Bobby. The guy you freely gave your innocence 11 years ago. Hmm? Don't I deserve a kiss? Huh? <laughs> All right, come here, come here, come here. Come and relax and share. Have fun. Uh, oh. oh, yeah. Oh. That's what we're talking about. Um, David, you're excused. Nelson, look away. Look away, boy. Oh, why don't I give you some good music? Oh, 
put you wow. in the perfect mood. Darkness has enveloped the kingdom of Abba. Yeah. Meaning what? What's happened? Your Majesty, I am Inspector Solomon from Divisional Headquarters. Yeah. The Princess of Abba and her chief maid Emilia are missing. This is a joke, isn't it, officer? It's not a joke, Your Majesty. We have every reason to suspect that they were kidnapped. This is our kingdom. Opoko, great God of Abba Kingdom, I have come to serve you. I have continued to serve you. I will continue to serve you. Opoko, Opoko, I am a I am Leo, Grand Servant of the Gods of the Northern Lake. Give way, let me carry out my mission. Yes, the next attack from me will kill you. Asri, Bumba de Bana, Meta de Merke.
Gods of Abba. Gods of Abba. Gods of Abba! I swear by this ancient sword of war, I will avenge your death, Ezemor. I don't know what this is all about. I do not know what is going on. But I swear that I, Ibokwe Obuka, the East Yogini of Abba, I will avenge your death, Ezemor. And I will avenge the death of every Abba indigen killed today. I will not stop. I will not stop until our princess returns to Abba. Mom, I will fight. Oh, I will fight for Abba. I, the Isogidi, will fight for Abba. Isogidi, Atakatabua, Anabraka, John, Okangani, Isogidi, Makis, Isogidi, Makis, Okawa. Nabaland, oh yeah, yeah, jamba. It's your kiddy, make it simple. Oh yeah, yeah, jamba. Apa mwenye, apa mwenye maji. Oh yeah, yeah, mami. Your Majesty, the gods are no more. What are you talking about? Your Majesty, the gods and people of Abba are under attack. What? Oh yes. We went to console them over the missing princess, and we met the abode on fire. Uh, what are you talking about? The shrine of the, of the all-powerful Okoko, and the gods of Abba on fire? Yes, Your Majesty. What did the chief priest say about that? The chief priest is dead. What? Yes. We found him in a pool of his own blood, right in front of his house. He was murdered. By who? I don't know. My daughter is missing. The police have no clue. And the gods are no more. The gods are no more. The gods are no more. My princess! Oh, oh, so happy. Don't you dare lay those bloody hands on me.
Mother, please don't. Don't tell me anything about the royal code of conduct. I don't want to hear about it now, not later, not ever. My goodness. What have they done to my daughter? The question should be that you don't to your daughter. What? Look at my face. And look at it very well, Dad. You will pay for everything you made me go through. You will pay for every blood that was shed in the process. You must face the law. That, I swear. What's it?